Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad that you're with me today. I've got a great interview with a friend of mine, Daryl Williams, who is not only a phenomenal artist, he's a member, been a member a long time, actually, uh, of the Created to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. And I love Daryl's story. Uh, this is the first time I've interviewed him on the on the podcast, but he talks really, really vividly about the struggle that he had with his own paradigm, his own internal mindset about what it meant to really be an artist. He talks about being a skeptic of <laughs> what it meant to be a real artist and, you know, talking about the, the frustration of actually having a lot of artistic skill, but lacking the confidence to really be a professional artist and wondering if he could go the distance, just not, you know, really having the confidence to be who God's called him to be. Con conversely, <laughs> he's been a part of the mentoring program now for a while. He's just finished his Master of Fine Arts and uh, went back to school, is doing some incredible work. He's getting a body of work together now to, to go into the marketplace and just is an incredible story of transformation. You're really going to you're gonna be encouraged by hearing Daryl's story today. You know, it reminds me uh, of really the reason why I'm doing this brand new video series that starts today. Hello, it's September 10th. <laughs> it starts today. It's called Artists Rise Up. And listen, one of the main reasons that I'm doing this video series is for all Christian artists out there who want to be a part of the artists, the army of artists that God's raising up all over the earth. But because of that mindset, that paradigm, that inner GPS system that is not aligned with how the kingdom works, they're unable to enter into all that God has for them. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've been frustrated like that your whole life, or maybe even in this last season. You're trying everything you know how to do, and at the same time, you're just not seeing results, and you wonder, where, Matt, where is the disconnect? Well, that's what this video series is all about, is helping to put together the puzzle pieces so that you don't have to live in confusion anymore. It's five videos. I'm talking about the rise of the thriving artist, the marks of a thriving artist, overcoming the major roadblocks of really thriving as the artist God's called you to be, how to experience accelerated breakthrough in your life, and then also the practical steps that it takes right now for you to start taking your place and stepping into everything that God's got for you as a creative so that you can hear his voice, so that you can create the work that you know is inside of you, but you haven't been able to get out yet, so that you can learn to tell your story and create a business or ministry that will do the thing that God has called you to do all while living the abundant life that God designed for you. That's what the series is all about. Now, listen, it starts today. If you're just hearing about this, don't worry. You've not missed a thing, all right? The first video comes out today. All you have to do is just go register for the series. It's absolutely free in the show notes. Just go to the show notes right here in the podcast. Click on the link. It's going to take you to a page with a little video where I tell you all about it. And then you're going to put in your name and your email to get access to my website so that you can watch the video or in the video series. We're going to be letting one of those videos out every day, and uh, it's going to be a big, big encouragement to you. We're, the reason we're doing it on my website is so that we can really cut down on the distraction that a lot of people feel when they're trying to watch that on social media. And so we really want you to be focused uh, easily on the things that, that God's trying to speak to your heart, and we feel like the best way to do that, we know the best way to do that is actually to do it on the backside of the website. So that's why we're doing that. All right. So I hope you'll do that right now. Jump in and uh, be a part of Artists Rise Up. Anybody can do it. It's absolutely free. All right. Now, listen, before we jump into uh, the, the episode with Daryl Williams, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people. I know two, ah, two short reviews today from uh, the podcast. One is from Flooding Light Artist, 
And they said, since listening to Matt Tommy, I love this. <laughs> since listening to Matt Tommy, I started believing in myself and what God ultimately wanted to do in my life. And I've sold more art in the last year than ever before. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Flooding Light Artists, congratulations to you. Big, big, big high five. Thanks for sharing and thanks for listening. And then the other is from Casey, 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 who I suspect is Casey Corbin, but I'm not sure. Casey Corbin, if it's not you, you just got a shout out. But otherwise, I, I think it is. But he says in there, Matt Tommy is the Christian art mentor. If you are a Christian and want your art to have purpose in the kingdom of God, I highly recommend Matt's podcast, books, and membership program. Well, Casey, thank you again so much. Love you, man. Glad you're listening. And I'm glad all of you guys are listening. If you've not ever reviewed the podcast, please go right now in iTunes or wherever you're listening. Scroll down to the bottom. Usually hit uh, write a review and leave a little review, five stars hopefully, and a little thought about why the podcast means a lot to you. I read every one of those and our team reads them. And it really, really is a big encouragement for us as we continue doing the things that God's called us to and raising up this army of artists. All right. Well, hey, without further ado, I'm going to get out of the way. You're going to love this interview with my friend, artist, Daryl Williams. Well, I'm so excited to have with me on the podcast today, my friend, Daryl Williams. Daryl, thanks so much for being with me today, man. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad to do this. Absolutely. I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know you, not only just seeing your artwork and getting to know your journey and that sort of thing, but also being another guy right in the middle of, of, <laughs> of art land, which tends to be a lot of women, which is awesome. But I'm like, there's guys out here too, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, we kind of, the men's group that uh, a mastermind we get involved with, we're like, hey, we guys, we need to hang out a bit more often. That's right. <laughs> we can talk about stuff with guys. And so, yeah, it, exactly. it feel a little rare. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's an interesting. It's an interesting journey. I think for men who are creatives and who are Christians, because a lot of times I think the, the church is, you know, kind of geared more toward the touchy feely kind of side of things and relationship community oriented, which is wonderful. But a lot of guys don't necessarily, you know, um, go that way as far as you know really lean that way into relationship and i think it's been so wonderful in the mentoring program as we've got to know each other and other guys that it's like yeah we we do need community we do need to share mm -hmm. and, and be able to, to be a support because so many times we can kind of be like those lone rangers right trying to <laughs> oh, yeah. well that's what society teaches us to do you know that's we right that's right so it, it's good i think to for us to to come together and I really enjoyed hearing your story and everything. Tell everybody just a little bit about who you are, what you do and in the last season that you've just come out of, cause you've kind of just completed a really <laughs> exciting season and you're like, hallelujah, I'm through it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I've been a visual artist as long as I can remember. I mean, I, I, I don't remember a time where I didn't have a pencil or a crayon in my hand. Mm. Um, so, um, graphite, colored pencil, oil painting, and now airbrush are my mediums. Uh, airbrush is my predominant medium. Right. Uh, I got interested in that when I was a kid. Uh, it was the middle of the 70s customized van craze, and I saw murals on the side of the van, and it was like, I've got to learn how to do that. Wow. And uh, never could figure out how it was done. Nobody could teach me. So I just kind of, it just kind of stewed in the back of my mind for years. And uh, speaking of this last season, in 2013, I returned to college to finish my bachelor's degree. And through a interesting series of events, I had to create a very large amount of work in a very short amount of time right and it's like can i use the airbrush to do this <laughs> and my advisor was oh, okay. sure, why not right <laughs> i can't help you with it because i don't know how to use it but sure and so uh i taught myself how to airbrush and did my bfa show in airbrush and uh finally learned how to do these murals on 
haven't done the side of a van yet, but I've done some large pieces. And that ended up um, leading me to going for my Master of Fine Arts degree, which uh, I graduated with in May of this year. And I'm like, wow, okay, God, I know you got me in here because when I first <laughs> applied, I didn't get in. And then I got a phone call in the middle of a semester saying, oh, we've got a place for you if you would like it. Wow. wow. <laughs> I had to sit down and I was like, what'd you just say? <laughs> <laughs> my whole life just switched like my schedule my focus everything right absolutely everything it was like after that phone call it was like i i guess i'm gonna go to grad school now <laughs> so uh what were you doing prior to that were you working full-time in another occupation doing your art part-time what did that look like for you um i was um recovering from having to close a business down before i went back to school mm. Um, I got into the business um, thinking that everything is going to be sunshine and roses, and it was nothing but a briar patch once I got in there. And the economic downturn and all that, just uh, one day I got a call from my, uh, my financer, the bank, and uh, they said, you got to close your business down. There's some stuff going on, and we need to back out of this. Wow. So I liquidated everything and was trying to go, you know, figure something to do. And it's like, I, I can't find anything in my area. Um, on a whim, I, I swear this was God saying, go do <laughs> this. I filled out an application to return to the local university here, not thinking anything about it. Two weeks later, I get an acceptance letter in the mail. Looks like oh. I'm going to go back to school. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, well, which, the Lord uses those times, right? I mean, those times that we're kind of at the bottom of the barrel where we don't know what to do. I know for me, that was the same thing. Economic downturn, 2008, things were at the bottom. And it was like, you know, we, we turned to the Lord during those times. A lot of times it's like, mm -hmm. oh God, what, do I, what now? What do I do now? So, oh yeah, yeah. I, I was completely uh, broken. Uh, thinking it was complete failure because I lost this business, had to close it down, um, had to make up a little bit of back taxes and, and all that. And, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go to school, I guess. So, um, and that was great. That, that helped me. Um, I look at finishing my bachelor's degree as fixing a mistake that I made a long time ago. I left school when I was 18 and um, back then, the instructors were gatekeepers. It's like mm -hmm. only certain people can be artists, and well, you're not one of them. Wow. Um, I was very, I've always been a realistic painter, illustrator, dra I guess draftsman's what the term is for people that draw. Um, very realistic, very, um, very much into recognizable subject matter and not right. into conceptual stuff at all. And that just didn't quite fit in with their description of an artist back in, what was that, 1988? <laughs> Something yeah, like that. Hello. So. I was in high school. So back then, 88. I can't even remember. What was I doing in 1988? Probably listening to Bon Jovi. And, uh, yeah, and yeah that would have been about right. <laughs> <laughs> We're dating ourselves. Then. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, fast forward, you're in the the MFA program, how did you even find out about Created to Thrive and the mentoring program and, and all that? My wife sent me a link over Facebook. Uh, Thank God for our wives, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She uh, said, hey, this popped up on my feed. Watch this video. And I watched the video. I don't even remember exactly which one it was, but there was just something in what you said in that video that it's like, this guy knows how to do what I want to do. Wow. Wow. Um, Cause you said up until this point, you're, it kind of been hit and miss for you. And there was also a lot of kind of mindset stuff going on. I mean, oh, dive into yeah. a little bit of that. Cause I know that's a big part of the transformation that you've had and are having right now in, inside the community. Yeah. Um, I say I've always had a, a pencil or a crayon in my hand, but it, wasn't always an approved habit to be doing. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I've been dealing with a lot of negative. Well, my internal paradigm was just a nasty little negative bugger. Uh, there's a, lo a lot of stuff. I was um, went through a, a divorce. My parents were divorced when I was like eight years old. So mm -hmm. It started when I was like seven. And it was not pretty at all. And because of that, there was a lot of negative commentary towards me and how um, how much I was like my biological father. Mm. That negativity created this internal paradigm that no matter no matter what, it would never be good enough. I wasn't good enough. Um, I was just like him. He was horrible, so therefore I'm horrible. Wow. And I tried to use my art as an escape um, when I was fairly young, and um, I entered a, a contest when I was early teenager, something like that, and I botched it big time. Um, I, I hate lettering and doing stuff with words in it because of that contest. <laughs> I misspelled a word, um, and I didn't go back and, and self-edit it and blew my chances uh, in that contest. And that just solidified that you can't be an artist. Wow. Because wow. you're, you know, um, so I've been fighting that my entire life, but at the same time, the, the creativity just keeps coming out. And you know, for people that don't understand, just to camp out there for a second, I think for people that don't understand the power of how your inner paradigm works, which we talk a lot about in the mentoring program. I mean, it's really kind of like an inner GPS system, right? That, that mm -hmm. sets up a grid for how you receive information, how you receive love or don't receive love, how you, interpret situations, what you think is possible, all this sort of thing. And when we have traumatic things uh, that happen to us, woundedness, fear, shame, anxiety, all that kind of stuff, unless that gets, that part of us gets healed and reoriented to uh, how the kingdom works and to, to God's truth as opposed to the truth of our experience, um, life continues to be very, very frustrating. And I think most people, like, like you're saying, that was my story as well, you just kind of start thinking, hey, that must be my normal, as mm -hmm. opposed to, oh, you mean I don't have to, to think this way? Because if you, if you never have that realization, you think that God's against you, the world's against you, things will never work out for you, and you're kind of always waiting on something to happen, as opposed to realizing, hey, I can cooperate with the Holy Spirit <laughs> to see, mm -hmm. this, see this change. And I just want to say I'm so proud of you because you have been so transparent in your journey of really, really working on this. And every time you come up against something, you're like, well, I'm tearing that thing down. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna Talk about how th some of the successes you've seen in that, because you've, I think more, probably more than anything uh, else that I've seen on your journey, you have really like attacked this full on. So talk about the difference between how things used to be and how things are now. Before I got involved with your program, it was like, I knew something wasn't right. I didn't understand that I could make the choice to change it. I just knew something wasn't right. And I kept battling it and triggering, you know, trying this, trying that. Um, oh, well, uh, maybe, maybe this brand of pencil will make it to where I can work. Or, or <laughs> right, right. I mean, it was crazy things yeah. like that. Um, and then um, I got involved with your program, started uh, reading um, uh, uh, Unlocking the Heart of the Artist. Okay. And um, I mean, just tears. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I can change. Mm -hmm. it, it, this stuff that, that has happened, it, it did have an impact on me. And that's when I realized that I can make the choice and I started understanding what Paul was talking about in Romans about renewing your mind. Yeah, exactly. Be because you explained it to way a creative could understand it. Right. And it was like, oh my gosh, now I know what to do. And um, it's not easy. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's a journey. It is. It is a journey. And just like any journey, every time you turn a corner, 
you find something else. And that's where, where mine's been coming from. There's been so much stuff, so much baggage. Um, got a cat over here being noisy. Uh, <laughs> Hello, kitty. We hear you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to be on the podcast today. <laughs> um, but there's been so much stuff that I, I've been uncovering, but it, it's like I knew that if I didn't deal with this, right. if I didn't get my mind uh, lined up with what is going on um, and that negativity addressed, that I would not be able to succeed as an artist. I, right. I finally found out that that thing that was always keeping me from advancing or growing as an artist was what I thought about myself. I always thought it was what uh, somebody else did or, 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 you know, being bullied or because of the divorce or there was always something else. I never really put it together that it was how I interpreted these events and internalized the results of that, that affected my decision-making. And it's that, that a lot was, easier for all of us, isn't it, to to real to think that it's some other external factor. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have this. I didn't have this advantage or whatever growing up. And so, because of all those things, I I can't do it. You know. And right. I think when you start to realize, okay, I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. <laughs> you know, I'm an adult <laughs> now. And if and if I want to change, you know, I can do that. And I think the beautiful thing is which you're realizing, I've realized in my life, others have as well. That when we step out, I think in the middle of that belief, not knowing what it's going to look like, that's when God steps in. So mm -hmm. many of us are waiting for this like supernatural thing of God to come in and fix everything. And it's like, he's there in the middle of this process as we lean into it saying, okay, Lord, I'm ready to, to make a step toward you. Now you make a step toward me. And that's when change starts to happen and that's so exactly <laughs> exactly i i it's easy to look back and see where they you don't always notice it at the time that it's happening right but as i look back at going and finishing up my undergrad which i ended up with two undergrad degrees i got a ba in ceramics and a bfa in painting wow. from going back with that um which was amazing. It's like, wow, how'd this happen? That was a yeah. God thing. <laughs> Getting into grad school, um, being able to use the subject matter that I used in grad school. Um, at, when everything was done, my advisor said, you have no idea how many obstacles you faced in the school with what you were doing. And I was like, no, I didn't. I hadn't a clue. Wow. Uh, but looking back, I can see that God was there the entire time. Mm. Um, I wasn't well versed in recognizing it at the time. But when I look back and I see it, it's like, oh, my gosh, he was not only was he holding my hand, he had the door held wide open. Right. And and was sweeping the twigs out of the front, <laughs> in front of me so I didn't trip up. So, yeah, it, it's it's. I always wish that I could see more at the time, but I really believe that if I could, then I probably would not lean on my faith as much as what I do. Yeah. Because then it would be like, Oh, okay, well there's a path. I'm just going to walk myself right over there and walk down that path instead right. of, okay, exactly. Lord, where do I put my foot this time? Right. Right. That's so good. Well, and now you're, you've really worked so hard in developing a solid foundation and allowing the Lord to heal those places in your heart, renewing your mind toward what's possible. And now you are, you're, you're out there. You've got your MFA. You're starting to build a body of work. That's really yours. You're stepping out in the marketplace. And I mean, I can tell just by looking at you and listening to you, the confidence level in you is so different now. And, and you feel ready. It seems like now to, to really be able to walk out there in confidence and do the thing that God's called you to do. Yeah, I do. Um, I've got this body of work that I've started on. I'm, progress is slow on it because of getting a, our youngest son over, off to uh, tech school, but <laughs> that's a different story. Altogether. That's right. But um, I've always been, as I mentioned, you know, I, I was attracted to airbrush because of murals on the side of vans. I've always been interested in vehicles 
and I love fantasy stuff. And um, one of the, the, the stories of a lot of fantasy books is how, you know, the young stable boy or whatever gets discovered and becomes like the paladin or whatever and saves the world and, and is transformed out of where he used to be into where he is now. And it's not as easy for me to illustrate that, but I understand how it, a car is restored and taken from something that you might find in a junkyard or a farmer's fence or a barn or something yep. like that. And then you bring it back to a trophy winning uh, prize worthy thing. And that's what this body of work is about. It, it, I take a vehicle and it's, it's a, usually the three quarter view and the furthest away that you can see at the very back corner is just ratted out. I mean, dense rust, right. parts falling off of it. And as you come to the, the front corner that's closest to you, it is show winning, showroom, completely restored, gorgeous. Wow. And, and because that's the way I feel like God, those of us that, are, that, that have never grown up in the church, we, and we come to Christ, uh, we feel like a lot of times, a lot of people will feel like, you know, there's no hope. There's no yeah. chance that I can ever be there because I've been so bad. Right. And um, that's how I can relate that in a way that makes sense to me. Because I, I don't know, I was something where I saw uh, a show or something on TV uh, where they were restoring a car. And it just, you know, those little thoughts that land in your head, those little God voices, it's like, yeah. this is how, this is how God works. That's in right. People. He takes this thing. Follow those clues, right? <laughs> and, and brings it into this amazing work that reaches people and, and restores us back to better than what we were before. And so that's what this whole new body of work is about. And it's, it's me, at, but at the same time, it's also anybody who's ever been lost yeah. and then found. And it's a way to relate to car guys or girls. Yeah. Um, in that you wouldn't normally, I would have normally thought about. And um, it's, it's, I don't know if it's would be considered prophetic art or, or what, but it's to me, it, it, it's telling my story in, in a way that's makes sense to me. Well, I'm sorry, you know, I, I just think, I think of my own story too, with like the kudzu baskets that I make and all that. And I was like, God, what in the world, you know, years ago, what in the world does this have to do anything with the kingdom of God and my calling, as, you know, as a person and all that. And it's like so many times with artists, the thing that you end up doing creatively is this beautiful prophetic, you know, reflection of what he's not only done in your life, but wants to do through your life. And I just hear you mm -hmm. saying the same thing. And that's so encouraging. I, you know, I'm so humble. I, every time I hear somebody talk about, the process of being in the mentoring program, learning about how the kingdom of God works and that sort of thing. I'm just like, thank you, Lord, because God's raising up this army of artists and all of us, you know, need to be <laughs> walking in this kind of authority and walking in this kind of uh, understanding of what we've been designed to do in the kingdom as artists. And Daryl, I'm just, it's been a privilege to get to know you, continue to get to know you over the years and hear your story. I know, folks are going to want to continue to follow you. What's the best way that they can follow you online, see your work and, and all that kind of stuff. The best way right now is uh, through Facebook. Okay. Um, I have my personal uh, page. It's Daryl Williams. Uh, there's a lot of Daryl Williams is out there. Um, but my art page is Daryl Williams studio. Okay. Um, I was, I had this really cool name picked out and, and um, there was one of the Q and A's you, you said, use your name. And it's That's like, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> changing You're the, the name. <laughs> You're the artist, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on Facebook, look up Daryl Williams Studio. I'm also on Instagram. I don't post, I haven't posted much this summer uh, because of family commitments and getting, like I said, getting a kid ready for college. <laughs> um, I, 
we're expecting a shipment of tools uh, this afternoon for him. So we're juggling that around. That's right. Um, but that's, that's where I post my work. Um, I, I don't post, I'm trying to, to get out of the Facebook habit um, of sitting there and just looking at everybody's work. Exactly. Um, so, um, you gotta go make work, right? In order to sell. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, I mean, I'm still in this transition period of finishing up from grad school and still rearranging my studio so I can actually get work done instead of moving stuff from one place to another. Cause that's right. Uh, but that, that's the best place right now. Eventually I'm hoping by the end of this year, I will have uh Daryl Williams studio.com nice. up and going. Um, that I want to get more pieces of this body of work finished. So I have that to show. Um, I've got my work that I had in my MFA show that I could use, right? but it's, it doesn't, the message I realized did not come through quite the way I wanted it to. And it's like with this body of work, it, I know exactly what I'm saying with it. And then I know how I'm saying with it. And I want that front and center and then I can have another oh yeah by the way I did this crazy stuff over here for my MFA to look at it because I mean it's it's beautiful work uh, and it's different but it's not necessarily my voice now yeah yeah um, totally get it awesome well Daryl thanks so much I know folks are encouraged to, to hear your story and realize that major change major transformation is absolutely possible when we start leaning into the Lord, renewing our mind, learning how the kingdom works. So Daryl Williams, thank you so much for being on with me today, man. Oh, thanks for having me here. It's been great. I, I, I'm always happy to tell that story of where I was and, and I haven't gotten there yet, but where I'm going. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We're all headed there. All right. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.